Hi, welcome to HLS Show Me How, setting individual file permissions for documents used in Microsoft Teams. My name is Michael Gennati, and I am a technical specialist working for the Microsoft Healthcare and Life Sciences Group here in the Northeast. So uh, the other day I was talking with a customer and one of the things that they had requirements around was some control at a file level um, within Teams. So in their case, they were sharing a uh, Excel spreadsheet like we have one right here. We can click on, we can see it, um, and it's going to open up and then people can come in, you know, certainly they can click on the various tabs. Um, and if wanted to, they could go in and actually select edit and begin to edit that. And those permissions are there for everybody within the team, right? If you're a part of a team, it's a given, given that it's simplified um, workflow and document sharing. It's a given that those folks are going to be able to go into there and actually be able to edit and work with it. But in this case, they needed to share. This was in a medical facility. There was only a couple, a small group of people that they wanted to give explicit permissions to work with the document. Um, and then the rest of the people simply be able to view it, but not edit. So that brought up individual file permissions. So I'm going to go ahead and close this document. And there's really two ways that you could uh, move forward with this very simply and easily. Um, and, and I'll kind of look and show you each of those. So the first of them is around doing it in place to a document. Now here, right, if I click on and I say, hey, you know, I want to see the options, we're limited in the options that we have available. Uh, but remember, documentation is stored under SharePoint. So the first option we're going to take a look at is editing it in place, the permissions, and we'll see that in SharePoint. The second is that we actually, for a given uh, set of files, if we know there are files that we're going to want to do that with, perhaps we have a group who's disseminating information like they would have done in the past in team in a team site um, in SharePoint, we want them to be able to have this small group edit and update and the rest consume that. We can also set up a secondary area of cloud storage that we can add either in line here or as a tab. So we're going to take a look at both options. But the first thing we're going to do is look at this here uh, in its, you know, uh, working with that. So I'm going to go ahead and open that document, right? Or open in SharePoint, I should say. And it opens up to the folder, the general folder under documents. If you click here under documents, you'll see there's that folder. And there's a number of documents that are here. And if I go to this given document, I can select it. And we have the ability to come in here where we can manage access. Or we can look at the details. And it has here, you know, some information. It's showing the different people and the access they have. And underneath that is advanced. So when I select advanced, I'm going to see there's some basic groups that were given uh, access. So site visitors, anybody that comes here can read the documents. That's already taken care of, right? Here's sales owner, full group, and sales members. This means members of this site. And if we click in there, we're going to see there are some individuals who have that access. So what we want to do is we are going to stop inheriting permissions. Now, let me say before I go forward with this, my personal belief is you should not do this in place. It can be done, but then you get into a permissioning um, mishmash within a given folder that can get to be confusing. Can be done. I'll show you how. I don't advocate it. The second way that I'm going to show is what I would advocate. But let's go ahead for uh, our, you know, the sake of setting this up. We're going to select Stop Inheriting Permissions. Again, it's just SharePoint. And now I can go through and I can say, hey, I want to remove, you know, these people, right? And I'm going to remove those sales members to this. And we're going to go ahead then and 
remove. Yes, I'm sure. There we go. So now only the owners have permissioning rights and the visitors have read rights. So I can come in here into sales owners. I already have a couple of people. Um, those would now be the only people who could edit and the rest could go in and view. So we, you know, we've gone ahead and very quickly and simply, now if we come back here into that view in Teams, let's just go ahead and refresh our view. Oh, I could have done it right there in the library, but there we go under files. There's still that piece. I'm logged in as the mod administrator. I can come in here. I still have that edit capability, right? To open that up in here. But for users who are not in that uh, owner group, they would no longer have access. So we've now restricted, they have access to read, but not to edit. So we've now restricted it here at that file level within the general files tab. Again, though, I don't advocate that. What I would suggest is this. Instead, let's go back. I'm going to close these out. Let's go ahead and open again in SharePoint that underlying site. If we know we're going to have a need for documents and other things uh, where we're going to have restricted access, we can come here to Site Contents. I'm going to select New. And I'm going to call this just for our demo. You'd call it whatever you want. Restricted docs. There we go. So I've got a name for that. We can show it in the navigation if we want or don't want. There's our restricted docs. Now this library has inherited permissions. What I'm going to do though is come on back here and we're going to select library settings. This is all old SharePoint, right? What's old is new. What's new is old. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. Stop inheriting. But now we're just doing it at this library level. So there's not going to be any confusion. It's going to be consistent across all the documents published. So we're going to remove these individuals here, right? We're going to remove the members. We're still going to give visitors the ability to read. We're going to remove those permissions. I did click that, didn't I? There we go. I didn't click. <laughs> so there we go. So now we have that. Again, site owners, we could give it a, another group, but we're just going to go ahead here into the site owners, take a look. There's those individuals again. Um, you know, and, uh, if there was a need for others, we could add those or we could go back, right? And we could even say, look, I want to grant permissions. And I could invite some specific people and say what they could do, you know, and have them listed above here. But the point is now we have restricted access at this folder level. And so if we come on back here to our restricted docs library, just for the sake of things, let's go ahead and let's make a new, oh, we'll make uh, an Excel document. We'll make it very plain. In this case, I'll just put some gobbledygook just so that we see something in the library. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and go back to our sales. So now we've got something in that library. Come back to our teams. And now we need to surface that library for our users. There's two ways we can do that. We could come in, first of all, within the general one and say add cloud storage, add SharePoint. And it's already opened up our sales one, right? As a particular, so I can click that, select next. And there's my restricted docs library, select next. Add the folder. It's gonna show in line in this library. We'll give it a second. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh, there it is. So now, Users again can come in, they can work with stuff in here, right? Without having to leave files, they can work with it. Even though that's in a different library, I can even go ahead if I wanted to, I could even add it as a tab at the top, right from here, that individual file, so people can access it. But the other way that we could also add this particular library, we could come in and say, I want a SharePoint document library. Again, here's our sales. So two different ways to add this and uh, bubble that up for users. And we'll call this 
restricted docs. There we go. And you'd name it whatever it was appropriate for your library. And so there we go. So then it's going to look and act just like our files area, right? But as a tab at the top. So two different ways. It's our choice. We can go ahead and, and add that. But we have a lot of flexibility. I do advocate the second method because that way we don't get into this whole, you know, in here by doing it at the file, individual file levels within the, the primary folder, we can really get into a mess of, you know, mishmash of uh, different settings and we don't know who's what and what's what and it, it just gets to be messy. So I advocate break it out, then add either of you in your files as a folder or add a separate tab and then you're going to have a very clean view of the documents that you want to restrict access to. So that's it. I mean, it's easy, right? So two different ways that I showed. And again, a library could be anywhere within your SharePoint online environment. Uh, if you want to have, you know, again, that kind of restricted access, read, but authoring rights for someone else, it need not be in the underlying site. It could be a completely distinct. Maybe you're pulling in documentation from HR or for projects, et cetera, and you're restricting things in that level. You still bring all that in, right? But I advocate have a separate library at the very least within your site, um, if not in a completely separate site that you then pull in and render for people to access. So it's just going to make it a lot easier for your users who have the rights to permit, you know, permissions to edit. They can do it right in place there. They don't even have to leave Teams either. They don't have to go out someplace separate and go back and forth. They can do it in place where they're at. But it, again, simplify it. You can do in place within the folder, um, the primary folder that appears by default, but I don't advocate that, although it's possible. So with that, just want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, if you have questions around things that you can do in Microsoft Teams, SharePoint, whatever, let me know, let my colleagues know. You can always find us at aka.ms slash HLS blog. That's aka.ms slash HLS blog. We'll be happy to help give you a little show me how, uh, or maybe even a live webcast with Q&A, but we want to hear from you. We want to serve your needs and we thank you for joining us. So I want to thank you. This is Mike Giannotti. Thanking you for joining me today and signing out. Ciao.